I'm Cameron Washington Richards. I'm 17 years old, and I am a student at Boys Let in the Philadelphia Charter, and I work as a Franklin Institute PECS program explainer, and I'm in some research program. Why do we need to share stories with each other? I will say stories really help you piece together why someone acts the way that they do. Um, and it helps you understand their personality and who they are as a person. I almost took my life at the age of between eight or nine. And it's not something that you always hear from an eight or nine year old. I want people to know that there are people and there are children who even experience things that we as adults or we as teenagers experience on a daily basis. It's hard to really, to really calculate or really get to wrap your mind around how a child's feeling until you actually ask them, or you may not be able to ask them that. So, you know, just, I guess, just always be in support of them and be in support of whoever is feeling that way. To tell a story, you have to be vulnerable, don't you? Telling my mom um, that I almost decided to take my life was something that, it was something that really helped. It was something that really helped me to become honest with people in general, and I hold, I take honesty as a very big thing for me. Sharing that side of myself, people have never really seen, and some people are like, you know, we've been friends for so long and you've never decided to tell me that until now. And I was like, well, it's not, I mean, I don't mind sharing. It's just that it's never come up in conversation. I'm a very sociable person and I'm very open to talking to people. So it's not something that scares me, but it's also not something that you know, I'm just seeming like, hey, I'm Cameron, you know, and I've almost taken my life, but I don't want it to come out like that either. You know, so I'm willing to share. I'm an open book, but certain pages you have to find. It's a rare thing. Like, it's, it's not genetic. You don't have to have something. It's actually considered um, a sort of thing where your white blood cells will attack your own body, and in this case, the white blood cells attack your um, hair follicles and they eat away at them, killing them, which will cause your hair to uproot out of your head and fall out. Do you think it's connected to the stress that you're experiencing? Yes, um, that's deeply connected because my mom didn't know what was happening. That was, that's what caused me to be bullied and that's what caused me to really lose my hair. Um, and that's what caused the bullying to become even worse. You know, I got called names and I really didn't know how to cope with that. Like no one knows how to cope with your hair loss, especially when you can't wear a hat in school. You know, I still have um, pictures, which I personally do not like. My mom still has the pictures of me when I didn't have hair um, eyebrows at one point. So I lost everything. And what do you do now to keep your sort of mental health healthy? I'm involved in a lot of programs. <laughs> I'm in the PACS program, which is Partnerships, Achievements, and Careers in Technology and Science. I've been able to make friends from that group, and I love them dearly. I love It's like another family, another support system. I think that having my own agenda, um, finding, I guess finding my own identity is what really helps the mental aspect. Um, being that I'm my own person and I know what I like to do like I, I do like clothes too I like clothes a lot I wanted to major in communications and have a minor in entrepreneurship or management and one day own a business going towards hats because I use hats as a covering mechanism um, it's still something that I'm used to like around my family I'll wear hats a lot but I'm willing to take my hat off but in public I will wear hats to the point I don't care if it's 108 degrees I'm wearing a hat